going to be talking today, today about um, uh, some life goals, some different things that you need to know on, on planning for your future. When I was a teenager, you know, sometimes people didn't talk about my future. And uh, I think it's really important for us to plan. And Allison Danker is a, a mental health coach specializing in working with youth and parents to help navigate life's challenges. Her singular focus is on helping people feel better about themselves and as a result, experience life with greater ease and enjoyment. So I'm really excited today to introduce Allison. Let me uh, let me bring her on here. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, Lori, thank you so much for having me. What you have created here is an amazing community and it's truly an honor to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Everyone, thank you so much for having me today. Um, Lori, I want to thank you, really thank you for everything you've done this week and everything you've done for almost 30 years. Thank You're you. You're a great role model. 24 hours of Zoom and I'm still kicking. <laughs> All right, so um, we're going to um, give you the spotlight, and this is the first time we've ever done anything like this, so um, uh, we'll just we'll just give it a shot, and uh, uh, take it over, Allison. I would love to. Hi, everyone. My name is Allison Denkner, and I want to start by saying today is an invitation, an invitation okay. that you can choose to accept or not accept. I'm going to offer life hacks. I work with people your age, older and younger. So I know the deal. I know what's going on. Um, and I'm here to offer some hacks. So I want to suggest you kind of lean into today to get some good stuff out of today. Isela, would you mind moving to the next slide, please? Here, yeah, I will share my screen right now. Um, Thank you so much, everyone. How, can you see is, that, Allison? Yes, it's perfect. Okay. Isela has really agreed. Oh, you can go right back up. Thank you. Um, Isela has kindly and patiently agreed to run the slides. Thank you. I can walk and chew gum. I don't <laughs> chew gum, but it, it really helps. Thank you so much. So today we're here to talk about unlocking your potential in, this, in the middle of Hope Week. And I want to start by saying that this is for all of us. This is for all of us. So I would love to welcome you to comment, to unmute yourself, and just share with us today. I want this to be a back and forth. You know, I want to hear how you're feeling and what you're thinking about what I'm saying. Next slide, please. Let me introduce myself and then I'll open it up a little bit. So I started as a kid myself, loving to help kids. I always spent time with kids. I became a teacher and while I was in schools, I was that person who kids came to, to work their stuff out with. And I saw that schools, even though they wanted to, couldn't help all the kids navigate everything. And I saw that parents needed some support in navigating the teen world and kids. I understand kids. So I went from being that teacher who all the kids spoke to, to in 2009, going out on my own. And there's me with the teens and I love it. So I talk to kids every day. I speak to adults, I speak to young kids and I really help everyone feel better about themselves. Enough about me, enough about me. Today is not about me. Today is helping you unlock your potential. I don't care if you're 13, you're 18 or you're 45 or 65 or 70. This will help all of us get somewhere. So next slide, please. I wanna suggest some ways to get some good stuff out of today. I wanna to suggest you be here as much as you can be. I wanna suggest you listen, not if I'm right or I'm wrong, because let's face it, if you're a kid, you may not have even signed up for this. You may not want to be here. And I know that, right? You may have been cajoled or just signed up. So with honoring that, 
with honoring that. I want to suggest you kind of lean in and listen, not from am I right or am I wrong, but what can you get out of it? There's something in it for you. I want to suggest you be here fully you, fully expressed. So if you're going to comment in that chat, and I want you to, comment from I so we know it's about you. And I want to suggest you stay open and curious today. Let me ask you, if you're willing to give a little something in the chat, tell me how you feel about being here today. Tell me what you think you hear me saying so far. I want you to know it's about you. It's not about me. I want you to know you can jump in. I want you to know you can comment. You can, I think there's a raise hand, maybe not. But we will be able to have some back and forth. So go ahead and interrupt me if you would like to. Next slide, please. You're going to see that twice today, I'm going to call you rock stars. And I'd like to talk about why I'll be calling you rock stars. I talk to kids every day and I know the struggles, but I think when you have an additional struggle, that is a physical one, that is an emotional one, that makes you feel like you stand out, I think it's really challenging. And I think that you are asked to handle all of the things that other teens are asked to handle, other, other adults are asked to handle, but you're going through a really hard time a lot of the time. So I've decided you're the, the rock stars of the teen world. I've decided if there are adults with us, you are the rock stars in our society because you're suffering, you're pushing through, you're finding ways around, and you're still dealing with all the stuff. So here's our agenda today. Our agenda today is I want to suggest we dive into, and here are my hacks. I want to introduce to you the difference with flipping negative expectations to positive intentions. And then we'll look at not what's right or wrong, but what's in it for you. Like I said, I'm not right or wrong, but I'll give it to you with some real world situations. And then we'll talk about what makes your heart smile. And then if we have time, I do want to hear from all of you. This is about you. So we may run out of time. If there's time, I'm also going to add how to start your day to slay your way. So the reason we're going to get through these slides is Isela. Isela, would you mind just coming on and letting me thank you and let everyone see you? Hi. <laughs> this, she's amazing and she's going to be helping us navigate. Thank you very much. Happy to help. Thank you. So next slide, please. I want to start today by introducing you to expectations. Those are pretty negative feelings we have about stuff and intentions. It's kind of flipping it to a more positive way to handle our tough stuff. And I'm going to introduce you. You can leave it there for a few minutes. We're going to be looking at a situation that Onyx, that's not her real name, but she likes to change her name. And she also loves Harry Styles. Um, she had a situation one day where she texts me and she says, do you know that my mother just signed me up for SAT prep? Now, let me tell you about Onyx. She has a lot of social anxiety. She worries about a lot. She's anxious about a lot. She's also really creative and smart and funny. You know, a lot of people have anxiety and this stirred up all of her anxiety. And let me tell you something, this prep was about to start 24 hours later. I had 24 hours to help her feel a little bit better about a situation she was having no, no, no how, no way about. Next slide, please. Let's look at what she said because some of this may sound familiar. When you find out you're signed up for something like today or something else, she said, it's a waste of money. I don't know why my mom signed me up. She said, it's not gonna help me. Oh, let me show you something. I'm gonna be moving my slides. You may see me doing that from time to time. Um, 
she said, it's not going to help me, Allison. She said, I'm not going to remember anything, you see, because Onyx, she thinks she doesn't remember anything. And she said, it's going to confuse me and it's going to make my score go down because this is what she expects from prep, right? She's had SAT prep before and she was confused and she wasn't comfortable and it didn't help her. So she goes into now thinking it's going to be the same. And she adds, I'm not going to feel comfortable there at all. Of course, she's not going to. She doesn't know this person. I say to her, what should we call the SAT, SAT prep person? She says, the SAT prep coach. I say, okay, let me, let me think about it for a minute. And I get out my paper and I write something down and I text it to her. And Oh, wait, before I text it to her, I say to her, listen, what about if we decide to flip it? Let's flip our fear, our negative expectations and create some intentions, some positive intentions. She says, um, sure, I guess, what's that? I said, okay. So I, I take out my pad and I write a few things down. And I try to flip everything she's experienced because how do we know that's going to happen again? Next slide, please. And I write these words on the pad and I text them to her. I'm going to learn a lot and I'm going to do better on all my tests from this prep. I was like, is this possible? She was like, yeah. And you know, we're getting her ready. We're applying for college right now and we need those test scores up. I know you know. I know you know, depending on what grade you're in, I know you know. And I said to her, this prep coach is going to make you feel so comfortable and at ease. And you're not going to feel anxious at all. And I say, you know what? You're going to remember all you talk about. Um, Caitlin, who made my slides, it says we, but it's actually you. You're going to remember all you talked about. And I say to her, you're going to score at the top. I was like, wait a minute. I think that's the name of the company, isn't it? Very funny. So she, she's hesitant, but she's looking them over. And I said, would you be willing to read it until you believe it? She rolls her eyes, Allison. I said, come on. Would you be willing to read it and tell you believe it? And Onyx, to my surprise, says yes. So she starts out reading it. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to do better on all my class. And after like the fifth or sixth time, she's like, Allison, I'm going to learn a lot and I'm going to do better on all my class. Dad. She's reading it a bunch of times and she's like, this SAT prep coach is, I'm going to feel comfortable. And if you, if you knew Onyx, she's about as flat as anybody you've ever met. So a little bit of rise and excitement was a big deal. And she said, I'm going to remember everything. I was like, well, it's on. I said, hey, would you consider saying this? Now, remember, she's, she's starting it tomorrow and she's hecka, hecka anxious. And I don't care how old you are, when we start something new, a lot of fears can crop up and that's when this helps. I said, okay, so take this list. I said, and say it before you go to bed. Say it when you first wake up before your fears jump in. Say it on the way to school because her mom drives her an hour. I said, and say it right before you get out of the car, before you go into prep, will you do it? What do you think she said, everyone, in the chat box? Honestly, she's 12, she's in 12th grade. It takes a lot to move her to do stuff. She's smart, she's funny, she's cool, but she doesn't like to do stuff. Do you think she agreed? Because I'm sitting there on the edge of my seat, can I help her? You know, she knows other skills for her anxiety. I'm going to look in the chat. Did anyone say anything? You think she did it? Well, I'll tell you, she agreed. She agreed. Um, 
here's what I want to say. Wait, let me see if I can see who's in. So everyone who's with us today, please feel free. Please feel free to say, join in. It'll be more fun for you, don't you think? Yeah. Think about putting away your phone unless you're on it. I did. I put mine away. And I'm going to have a giveaway at the end if you were willing to uh, resist that phone a little bit. I won't know, but you will. Next slide, please. So what I wanna talk about is I know many of you, some of you came from dialysis straight to here. It's not easy, it's not easy. I have close friends, but I have not gone through this myself, but I know it's not easy for you. So we can either explore through, you know, all those medical procedures that you're just like, oh, I have to go again. Or we can first jump into transitioning to adult treatments. So let me ask you, I know a lot of you, I'm gonna try and go to participants, you guys. I know a lot of you go to treatment all the time. I know a lot of you may also be transitioning and I know there's a lot of fear around that. So Zach or Janine or Juan or how do I say your name? Kadichu or Karen or Carol Kadichu. Welcome. Carol, Marge, Monique, Teresa, I would love to hear if you would like us to do dealing with medical procedures first, or if you would like to talk about transitioning to adult treatments first. What do you think? What do you think? Do we have anybody weighing in? This is how to, this is how to make your potential zoom zoom everyone, not mine. What do you say? Well, okay, you know what we're gonna do? I think everyone, no matter how old you are, you have to deal with medical procedures, if not all the time, from time to time. So how about we you start know, there? Um, Allison, um, I could say that, you know, I had to transition when, and it was difficult because when I was a pediatric patient, um, you know, you get a lot more attention because pediatric facilities in children's hospital are a little bit staffed a little bit better. And when I went to, I had to transition to an adult unit, it was a little frightening at times because the place was much bigger, things were more fast paced. Um, Sadly, I mean, you know, it's just a, it's part of life, but I I wasn't a, a, used to seeing people who are older and who are really sick because I was in a pediatric facility. So I was around my younger peers. So it was really a little bit challenging at times. And then also the place was much noisier to me because it was more uh, stations and and they didn't have kind of all the bells and whistles that the pediatric unit had. This was a while ago, but not everybody had, you know, um, their own TV or stuff like that, which, you know, when you're in a pediatric hospital, you usually get, you know, a lot of support. And that was challenging. And then, you know, also growing up with my pediatric doctor, I just switched to an adult doctor because they can only take you till you're like, I think it's 21 sometimes people make exceptions a little bit longer but that was hard too because I you know I had grown up with my doctor and so it was all all very very um a, a challenging and you know you adapt and I was on home dialysis at the time which really helped because I was in control of my own treatments um, and I think if I was in center where I actually went to the dialysis center to have to get my treatment, it would have been much more difficult because when you go to a hemodialysis unit, um, an adult one, you know, there's a lot of people who are, you know, on the end of their life, um, you have to abide by their schedule. 
Um, and, you know, you just, I'm happier when I have control. So um, I just wanted to throw that in there. I, I really want to thank you because those are those fears, right? Those are real fears and real expectations of the difference. And I think so many people have so, you can spend so much time in that fear and that anxiety. And you just spoke to all of them. Um, we can start with either of them. And really, since you gave us a great window of the fears, Isela, would you mind skipping the first and going to the next slide? And then we can come back to it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lori. So Isela, if you're able to write on that, we had talked about that. Can you give us your magic? Oh, she's good. Okay. So any of the things that Lori said, it's going to be noisy, right? Um, I, I think a lot of kids feel like they won't know what to do. Can you join us? Can you, can you say a little something about your fears? Because I'm probably the only one who won't understand 100%, but I love to understand people and what you're going through. That's what I do. And you're among friends. You're among people uh, who are struggling as you. So we see one dealing with medical procedures. Thank you. Um, and then um, I actually think of, you know, I, one of my fears or expectations was, you know, people always treated me like I was a little kid and I, I felt like I was smarter than them. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Don't you understand what I know? Just because I look like I'm 10 doesn't mean anything. Yes. And you know what? As I say, I believe everyone's the rock star of our humanity here. So uh, you're a lot smarter than people are going to assume. And you know what? People may feel out of place. Would you? I think that's really what Lori was saying, right? It's you'll feel out of place. Um, you know, I had written down a few things and I had thought, you know what else? You, want, you, you feel like you know what to do in pediatrics. You don't know what to do. You're afraid you won't know how to handle it, what to say. Let me see what someone said. Here we go. I just want to thank Abigail and Isela for commenting. Yeah, thank you. So I want to talk about the fact that Lori made it through and a lot of people have made it through that tough transition. Transitions are tough for little kids, for adults, for teens, for anybody. You add a lesson to everybody. So I came up with a few. Can any of you think of a way to flip it perhaps? and help yourself reduce some of that anxiety, but anticipating some comfort, perhaps. One fear your daughter has. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, right, right. Oh my gosh, this poor child. Oh, I'm so upset for her. Okay, so I, maybe we, we say that then maybe we start to say, I'm okay. And I'm not going to have the same suffering that other people around me might be suffering with. What do you think? I think, isn't that so reasonable, Carol, that she had those fears? I would have, you would be terrified. You would just be terrified. And so I think if we can flip it, and that's what all of these are, Abigail, honestly, these are affirmations. That's exactly what we're doing. Smart lady. And so I want to start with what I had hoped with was I'm going to feel comfortable. That's what I had written down. I wrote, um, and these can be your affirmations, right? Everyone will be nice. People will notice what I need. One I thought, this is going to seem ridiculously out of place, but it actually may be more fun than you realize. You may connect with someone in there, you know? Think about the times that you actually met someone you liked speaking to, or you'd like speaking to someone helping you there, or a nurse. 
Yeah, tell yourself you'll feel comfortable. Let's try another one to give you a hang of this. And you guys, you can screenshot this. Use it as a template for yourself. You can write your fears. You can give this to your kids. Write their fears. And then they're not going to be able to come up with the, uh, the intentions by themselves when they're racked with that fear. And that's why I came up with them for Onyx. That's why I come up with them for Nicolette or for Louise. And that's why I come up with them for Milo because they can't, when we're, when we're in the grips of anxiety and fear, we can only see that. So if you can listen to the fears of your child, truly listen, because I had to listen to what Onyx was saying and then address them with a positive spin Ask your kiddo to be willing to read it to you until they believe it, which is a big ask. I know I can get them to do things a lot of times their parents can't, and I wish you luck getting in there. Um, I would encourage them to say it until they believe it. And then you're looking for changing that anxiety before they go to bed so they don't go to bed with that fear. Changing that anxiety to intentions when they wake up when they're going where they're going, because that fear can be gripping and all encompassing. We've all lived through it in different ways. Thank you so much for sharing that, Carol. It's that fear of seeing people who may have been amputeed and being terrified that if you go there or not even afraid that if you go there, that it may just happen to you and finding out that everyone is different. Everyone has different situations. Someone wanna say something? Did someone wanna uh, say something? Well, you know, too, I, I also too, um, anytime I had to transition, I hugged my dog. Um, <laughs> and I always like spent time with my dog. So uh, that really helped me. You know, I, I love that idea. I hug my dog all the time. There was a picture of me and my dog originally with the pictures of me at the beginning. You know, there are other things you can do and this isn't included here, but breathing in through your nose, one, two, three, four. And breathing out through your nose, one, two, three, four. It resets that anxiety. If you still feel gripped in your anxiety, do it again. If you still feel gripped in your anxiety, do it again. If you're not someone who has gotten used to breathing to calm yourself down, I'll tell you the, the boom, boom secret sauce is in the exhale. There's your secret sauce, everyone. It's in the exhale. So. I walk clients through this all the time. I'm happy to just do it once or twice. You would, you would, I use my fingers so I'm not distracted. And I go like this, breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four. And breathe out through your nose. One, two, three, four. And everyone, you can breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, four, and breathe out through your nose. One, two, three, four. That's one tool. Affirmations are a great tool. And I'm calling them flipping them, right? I'm flipping them from expectations of fear and anxiety to intentions. I'm going to believe like, you know what? Let me take you back to Onyx with SAT prep. We don't have to go back, but let me tell you something. She was so gripped with anxiety and always is. We got her community service hours to do it at home. So she didn't have to interact with people. She's very anxious. You know what she reported after the first time with the SAT prep coach? She said, he's really cool. He has a friend who does the voice of anime on two of the shows she watches and on Hayao Miyazaki movies. I was like, what? So she found a way to feel comfortable with the guy and she did. And you know, you can think about when you go to adult 
treatments, there may be someone who has the same interest as you, same sense of humor, same fears, same accomplishments, same troubles. You don't know. You may find a really good friend. And what Lori said is if there's anyone you connect with, they're as anxious and worried as you are. Think about reaching out and saying, let's get together for lunch or for, oh, I don't know. Hi there. I, I have a question for you, Allison. Carol wrote a message saying journaling seems helpful for anxiety and putting it on paper, which I totally agree. I, I like to paint, which helps me with anxiety. But um, one of the things that I'd like to get your opinion that when people just go to some social media platform and use that as their diary. Uh, I don't suggest doing it. Yeah. I mean, just talk a little bit about that. Like, you know, I mean, I just see a lot of people being very public with every emotion and it, you might get immediate feedback and say, Oh, I hope you're feeling better, but can you just talk a little bit about that? Because. Yes. Yes. I would love to. Thank you for Lori. Thank you. One of the ways to make sure that you can feel like you're in a safe place to express yourself, and a lot of times it does help to express yourself, is to go to your community and express your vulnerability there. So if you can find communities on social media for kids who are going through dialysis, for kids who are struggling with the timers and the appointments and get on there and say, I can't take it. My mother keeps making me go or these people at dialysis, they're driving me crazy. And you're going to get other people. You you may find your people, you may find your tribe. You're going to find other people that say, Oh, I know. And this is what I've tried. I think if you put it out there on your main Facebook, I think the people who love you or in, you know, or IG or TikTok, I think, The people who love you, the people who care about you, will worry about you and want to help you. If they haven't shared the same struggles, you may get back responses that feel insensitive, even though they're not intended as such. That's my concern. Um... People are good, but people don't always know. And I would just kind of, you know, piggyback on that because, you know, I've been watching social media for a long time. And one of the things that I had to learn in my 20s was that I had a lot of abandonment issues. Um, and, and and one of the things that I learned about myself was that uh you know, if I just push people away, then I don't have to worry about being abandoned. But then it, 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 it's a it's a cycle because then no one wants to spend time with you because you push them away. We all have a little of that. Yeah, exactly. I know. It's so true. It's so true. I mean, we, um, you know, I, I would do it. I was like, and to give you an example, what I would do is I would you know, I would go out on a date or something like that. And, you know, I was so afraid of getting close to somebody because if uh, I I knew that they would uh, eventually leave me, I felt at the time, I felt that somebody would always leave me because I was damaged. And, and so it was a self-fulfilling prophecy because I remember on one of the dates, I'm like, yeah, I do peritoneal dialysis and I've had all these surgeries. And I mean, I realized that that was not what you tell on the first date. Um, And and I was doing it because I was just setting up this self-fulfilling prophecy of, well, I'll just, you know, I'll just tell the people how unworthy I am of their love. And And then then I'll teach them how unworthy I am. Exactly. And, and it was interesting because I had to really get honest with myself and say, look, wait a minute. Um, my illness is way down on the list of who I am. Yes. It's not, it's not at the top. You know, I'm, I'm A, B, you know, I have a good sense of humor. I'm, I mean, you know, I'm taller right. than I look. I'm taller than I look. I'm resilient. I'm creative. I'm all of these things. I'm a good cook. I mean, you know, stuff like that, that, um, 
would make me understand all the different people. And I, I read this book once and I just want to reemphasize to everybody. It was called Intimate Connections. I read it when I was like 21. And it talked about how do not say anything to yourself that you would not tell your best friend. I say that all the time. And That's right. I mean, I still I still practice that today because I have that little committee in my head that's just like, oh my God, they just go rampant. They just have a field. They, you know, who needs somebody to to beat me up? I'm beating myself up. We are the only voices in our head. What you're saying to yourself is the only message we're all getting. And if you speak to yourself like you would your best friend you'll get further. If you speak to yourself and put yourself down, you are pushing yourself down. Let me, let me get to, um, I think this is the same thing. It's sort of like right along in your head, right? Because I'm the next slide. What, what did you uh, 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 Isela, I'm going to take myself off and you can, and you, you can put, put your on. next slide up. Thank you. And you can go to the next one if you don't mind. This is perfect. So not right or wrong, but what's in it for me. But I want us to flip it and say, get off of blaming what's wrong with me and instead say, what's in it for you? What's in it for you? Because I promise you there's something in it for you. It's hard when we're about to go down the the sad path, the pity path, the bad path, the they hate me path, the, the path I'm not included, I don't belong. We can all go there. But I'm going to challenge you to do whatever you have to do to flip it. Next slide, please. And look for what's in it for you. Watch this now. She just found out she wasn't included in, a, in an event that all of her kids, you know, all of her friends are going to. And at first she's about to sit down and talk about how much she stinks. And then she's like, wait a minute, I don't need an outfit. And she's like, I don't have to worry about what everyone else is going to think when they see me. And let me tell you something. Everyone is thinking that everyone else is worried about what are they going to think about me? It's true. You, know, you may be able to hang out with someone in your house who you enjoy your mom might give in about something or your dad might give in about something they hadn't before. You might be able to chat with someone online who you don't get to often. You know, I was thinking also, you might get to create something you want to. Next slide, please. So you find out you're not invited in a group chat. Can anyone think of something that's in it for you? Can anyone, I, adult, kid, anyone, what's in it for you? You find out you're not invited. There's a whole lot of what's not okay, what makes you feel terrible, but I'm asking you, what can we find in here that's good? I'll give you one. Oh, good. What have you got? Okay, let me start us and let's see who can take us from there. I'm thinking you get to binge watch something on Netflix or YouTube. Okay, what have you got? What's a positive way? What's in it for you? You're not going out to that gathering. You could be going down the pity party. You could be going down the, oh my gosh, nobody likes me. No one invites me. I'm never invited to anything. Or you could say, I'm going to watch that show I was going to watch. I think for me, I get to do arts and crafts. I was going to say that. Yes. You could write, oh, yes, spend, yes, Sarissa, thank you. Isn't that like, we love spending time with our pets. So could you add spending time with our pets? That quality time with pets is a beautiful thing. I'm missing my baby right now. Um, you know, you could take a really long shower. You know, along with doing um, arts and crafts, a lot of people will write poems. A lot of people like to write stories. They don't think of themselves as writers. 
You know what else I wrote down? Oh, train your dog. Train your dog. You know, I would also say is that um, I've actually gone to things and felt like I was alone anyways. You know, I think it's like, yeah, and you could say that. You could say to yourself, what's in it for me? The last time I was with this group, I didn't feel included. I get to stay home. And I wrote something. Oh, you know what you could do? You could create a video. You could create a game. You know, there's so many things you can do for you without going somewhere and worrying. And you'll be there the next time, perhaps, or even if you won't. Let's or not. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, well, and I want to say also, or create your own little group. <laughs> create a new group. Decide right then and there, these people aren't your group. And you're going to reach out to people who you've met somewhere. You're going to take that step. I want to say, I say this all the time. Baby steps are still steps. Little itty bitty steps are still steps. Can anyone think of anything else that, look, you feel like you're not included. You feel like what was in it for me, I just don't know. But if you can force yourself to find something, it will stop you from going down that hole. It's challenging. I know from the people I talk to all the time, it's challenging, but it's possible. I promise. You just have to be willing to flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. Don't stay in the sadness. Flip to what's in it for you. Next slide, please. I'll, I'll slide my new slide yours. So we're going to, this is a, this is a meaty one. And I, I hope we have some time. Let's, let's hope. I hope everyone can really get something out of this. You know, a lot of times we're not comfortable saying no because we want to be included. We may feel like we don't belong. We may feel like we're not good enough. We may feel like we don't have what other people have. As I say, I refer to you as the rock stars. So we may want to put on that little crown there. We may want to put on that little sign. I want to help you rock stars, you resilient ones, you ones who can ha handle anything. I want to help you explore how to feel really you, how to like, because what Lori was saying, getting creative, if, if you play an instrument, if you like to draw, if you like to paint, do that when you're not feeling great, you will find your happiness. Um, and then we're going to talk about saying no and making sure that your relationships stay intact while you still say no. Because I know a lot of times you go along with things because you want to still be a part of that friendship. Or you don't want your parents to be upset or your kids to be upset with you. And I want to help you explore it a little bit. So first we'll go through, you know, finding what's important to us. And I want you to really think about it as we explore it, because this is for you. I want you to feel comfortable screenshotting any of my slides and running with it. Um, I want to give you some examples, right? Because watch, if you can make you happy, If you can find ways to make you happy, if you can discover what's important to you and feels good in your heart, that then you will know when people are pushing on that. Do you understand what I mean by that all? What do you hear me saying? If you know what's important to you, you will feel it when someone's pushing on you in a way that's not comfortable to you. I'd like to give you a recipe for pushing them back, but still do it while saving face and maintaining that relationship. These are also called, in other words, boundaries. Next slide, please. So I wanna look at this list with you and I want you to think about what resonates. Take a look at it. What resonates with you? 
What do you like to do? What matters to you? Is it gaming? Is it drawing? Who likes to have fun? Not me. I like fun. I do too, right? Um, how many of us like to feel included? Let's face it. Everyone likes to feel included. Everyone likes to feel included. Sure, thank you. Yeah, you like to play games? Definitely. How about feeling understood? Building friendships, they're not easy, but they matter, right? Connecting. Maybe sometimes you need to relax. You've been to dialysis. For those of you who just joined us right after, I hope this gives you a space to feel out what's important to you and you can relax. Um, and then the last box, I just wanted it to be when we feel like we're in our groove, we feel like we're shining, we feel like we're winning. I wanna suggest you try something. Oh, what is that woman's name, Who that blonde hair woman who's very motivational? She suggests, there was research done that if you slap the mirror five, it cues parts of your brain to feel like you have achieved. So think about what here on your list, on this list feels like it matters to you. Your opinion mattering, connecting, having fun being included, right? Music is fun. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Music is always fun. Who had music on already today, even at the time we got on? Who danced already to music in their own kitchen, their own bedroom, or their own bathroom today? Yeah. Try it. It livens things up within you. Well, think about this list. If something on this list matters to you, embrace it. Own it. Let's move to the next slide, please. I wanna spend some time right now thinking about, it says values, but I feel like, I wonder if you could change values. Could you write on top of values and just say what you like, what matters to you? I feel like that's more of it, right? What matters to you? Thank you so much, Isela. Isela reduced my anxiety. Look at her, she's on it, my gosh. Look at this girl, she's good. Just slap it right over there, or oh, you can't. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you. Um, I Let me hear as Isela tries to do that. That's kind of awesome, thank you. Um, take something from the list that we just had up creating music, listening to music, spending time with your pet, your friends, your mother, your father, your siblings, your grandparents, your aunt and uncle. Ooh. So I wanna add being feeling included because I feel like we all would like to feel like we're included. Thank you, Isela. I love the way you wrote it that I'm included, yeah, thank you. Next. Can someone give us next? You've already heard from me. You've heard from Lori. What do you want to add to this, everyone? It'll be our standing document to help other people. Thank you, Charlene. Feeling loved by my family and friends. That's everything, right? Isela, would you mind writing that? Feeling loved by my family and friends. I think that's a, that'll be great also when we're talking about, you know, feeling pushed on, right? Because if it really, if it's something you value, I do, I know a lot of us do, family and friends, being like everyone else, not just a patient. Carol, you're not just a patient. You know, let me say something. You know why I work with people one-on-one? -on -one? Everyone's different. That's why. 
Everyone learns differently, feels differently. And everyone who looks like they're all the same, they're not. They wish they were all the same with their clothes. They wish they were all the same with their hair. They wish they were all the same with they, that they could read. They, they wish they were all the same for having people who would take them to dialysis. No one is the same and no one, and like everyone learns differently, everyone feels differently, but I know we all feel like that, especially until you get older. I, I, it's hard. Um, yeah. You know, the only way I believe you're going to know you're more than a patient, because I've worked with people, I've worked with my clients on this about labels. You've got to tell yourself everything else you are. If anyone has some paper, yes, everyone is different, right? No one is the same. We don't have the same anything. We're all humans. We're all in the same human family. But we all have hopes and fears. We all have wants and desires and the need to feel safe. But from there, you know, I teach young kids too and I teach people too. Everyone learns differently. I knew that in the classroom. Um, and, and if a teacher doesn't know that, your, your kiddo, you, you're not being served. Um, okay, so let's say it's really important to you to feel like you're more than a patient. Let's say it's more important to you to feel like you have the love of the people who matter to you and you wanna feel included. And let's take these values, because I think we all probably feel them to a degree. And let's take some situations. I've got some that I can give us as examples. We've got a girl named Nicolette who's now in college. She had just learned to drive last year and it was a rainy night and she was in this position where her sister's friends were actually including her. She was not included. She didn't feel included. She had had a lot of struggles socially. She's at SCAD now, happy as heck. Um, and these girls who she craved to feel included with wanted her to drive one night to a kava place and she was not comfortable and she was afraid. She texted me, I'll tell you what I suggested she say. Next, we have Onyx revising, you know, bringing back Onyx. Onyx is determined to have a cat cafe when she gets older. She has one friend from her art school who also likes the idea of cat cafes and it's her best friend. Well, this best friend lives really far away and the only cat cafe is right in the middle. And every time Onyx asks her friend, her friend does not answer. So her friend is afraid to say no to Onyx, right? She's not answering at all. Okay, next I have Milo. He doesn't want to go to a party. The last time he was at that party, he ended up fighting with someone. When he fought with someone, his tennis coach found out. He was kicked off. So let's go to the next slide and I'm going to give you the recipe. Take me off this if you can and just let people screenshot this. This is the recipe to save face. And Lori says, one thing that happened is she was looking forward to something and she would get sick. Oh my gosh, and feel like you were disappointing people. Yes, yes, yes. And so, Let's start with, I won't be able to. One of the things we can have in there is I won't be able to drive tonight. Would you mind adding that? And then would you mind going down? Let me tell you what I had her say. Suggested, offered, invited, I should say. I invited her to say, I won't be able to drive tonight. 
but I can drive tomorrow when we go for smoothies. Thank you for typing on the fly. How about the Cat Cafe? Onyx keeps asking, because I keep pushing Onyx to do social things, right? So I'm like, who do you want to get together with? I'm like, go ahead and make plans, you know? And then the girl doesn't answer. The girl can say the following. I, I forget her friend's name. The girl can say the following. My parents, here's the deal. Her parents aren't going to drive her an hour just to drive back. You don't have to write that. But here's the deal. Here's what she can say. I can't meet you at a cat cafe. My parents won't drive me that far. But they said they will drive me for a sleepover at your house or you can come to my house next weekend. And, you know, this was happening on a Wednesday. So it was pretty good timing. We've got Milo. Would you mind, like, I'm not going to come to the party. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to come to the party tonight. Now, a lot of people feel uncomfortable saying I'm not going to be able to because they feel like they're lying, but you're actually just putting down your limit. I'm not, I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm not going to. So I'm not going to be able to come to the party tonight, but I, I can come to next week's party and I'll see you all at the park tomorrow. He's not getting in trouble from fighting. I have one. No, I can't give you my test. Can you write that down? No, I can't give you my test to copy. Thank you so much for doing that, Isela. But I can study with you tomorrow and Thursday and Friday and through the weekend to help you be ready on Monday. See, what I'm looking for is when you feel pushed on, I want you to be able to say no, but say what you can do. And this is that recipe. Adults in the group, this is all of us in relationships. I won't be able to call you tonight, but I'll talk to you tomorrow. I won't be able to make it tonight to the girls event, but I will be able to join the next one and I can't wait. Can we get together for lunch in between? When you tell someone you can't do with them, something with them, offer them something else right away. Yeah, right, let me see what, I attest to hovering in the challenge of, yeah. I'm just reading what you're all saying and it's challenging to gain independence, right? I know, I know, um, right, right, it's true. Thank you, yeah, thank you, really insightful. Thank you for what you're sharing. It's hard and then let me say something. Kids, believe, I wrote an article about this and I'm happy to find it and include it as a resource that you share. Kids believe what we believe about them. Kids believe what they tell themselves. Kids believe what they hear. If you believe that your child can do it, they will come up to your expectation. And it's really hard because you have to take care of them. You have to make sure they're okay medically. You have to make sure they're okay emotionally with all the anxiety and the fears, the terror, right? And it's very hard. It's very hard. That's how I work with parents also because it's very challenging and I know that. Um, Carol, it's not easy. It's not easy what you're doing because it's not only in this situation, it's with any medical situation or any situation where the child you love and believe in has been given a diagnosis. Uh, Abigail, yep, yep, yep. Abigail, when I was 26, let me tell you something. Do you know that we all still have the teenage, the adolescent brain until our mid twenties? And I was just saying yesterday, I don't even think I matured until a few years ago. Same here. <laughs> I'm 53. I don't think I matured till I was about 50. It's like, you know, when, if you struggle with stuff as a kid, when you struggle with stuff as a kid, 
it may take longer to mature. It just may. Let me just see what you're saying, Lori. Can I talk about what they worry about and how to tell them to take care of myself? And wait one second. Um, okay. Can you talk about when parents are on and you take meds, et cetera, and they worry, but you tell them taking care of myself? Okay. So a lot of times you're co-opted. I'm going to speak very frankly. A lot of times you're co-opted into the stuff with your kids after all these years of advocating and cajoling them through really tough stuff. And um, first, I think what you were saying, let me go back to it to make sure. I think what you were saying, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. So you can tell kids, here's the challenging thing. If, I'm thinking to try and be really thoughtful and I'm trying to think about a specific family. I'm thinking about a girl named Nicolette and she uh, was the baby of the family. And she, mom was very worried about her gaining independence. And I said, look, as kids are going to school or they're embarking on anything new, adult treatments, any kind of transition. They're afraid and they will regress. We will all regress because we're afraid and we want to be taken care of. They may be pushing parents away and at the same time regressing to a degree. And what I said to this mother was, okay, you know what? She, she's afraid to go to school, of course. Let me say, I mean, look, why would you want to leave where they make your food and they take care of you and they help you with everything and they love you and they like you? I said, how about do her laundry anyway? Because it makes her feel comforted when she leaves for school. You know, she's going to have to learn anyway and you can teach her then or I can teach her then. Um, because she needed that, right? She needed that in that transition. At the same time, we need to help kids gain some independence because of the fears that you're all sitting with, I know. I know you're all afraid, but you need to help them gain some independence. One of the things you can do is just the way you say it will help. I know, you, this is one of the ways I teach parents to say it. I know that you will be so proud of yourself it's different than I will be proud of you. I, will, I know you will be so proud of yourself when you do something that scared you. Good job doing something that scared you. Good. <clears throat> I teach parents when I'm doing workshops about changing behavior in kids, changing self-esteem, because I believe when we change behavior, we have the opportunity to also help them feel better about themselves. And so, one of the things you can do is you can identify what you'd like to see them do to succeed at something. Break it down into some steps. I can find, I'll try and find something I've presented and see if I can share it. And um, what you would do is you want to name the steps they need to take to accomplish the task they don't believe they can. I'm going to say that again. You need to name the steps they need to take to accomplish what they don't think they can. If they thought they could, they would have done it already. If all your other kids did it and they haven't done it already, they just need the steps because their anxiety is running away with what to do. So if you say, I'm trying to think, can someone give me an example that's very relevant right now so I can make it really great for you and you can use it right now? A lot of times I try to make it universal, like getting out the house to treat, getting out of the house to treatment because no one wants to do it. Would you like me to use that or would you like me to use something you can all, something about independence? We can do it with laundry. Yeah, okay, 
Charlene, I have to be honest with you. If you tell your kids to remember, they're not going to remember because you're taking care of it for them. If you give them a schedule, they will not. One of the ways I encourage kids to do it, and it's in a non-parental vein of conversation, what you would want to do is encourage them. I have them find the fun ringtones. You know, I have, I walk them through fun ringtones and then I have them set reminders on their own phones. Now I'm going to challenge you with something. The next step would be, did you take your medication? Don't, don't because you're still managing it for them. Instead say, how was it for you to remember to take it? How was it for you to have that reminder? Did it help you remember? Talk about it sideways, sidestep it and ask questions about the logistics. You're teaching your child to look at the details, look at what they need to consider, value that it might be challenging to do this new thing, right? So just with the taking their medication, because you're probably terrified they won't. And if you text them when they go away to school or whatever, they may not read it because they're used to it or they're in class. So if we can help them do it, running through it for a few weeks before they go to school, perhaps building in some rewards that they choose, they choose for feeling proud of themselves for taking on something they were intimidated to take on. So a lot of kids, I don't know if you've heard the term learned helplessness, but it can happen. Um, They may not, there may be just so much anxiety around creating the schedule in their phone that if we can help them by identifying the ringtones, don't tell them, ask them to go through the ringtones and ask them which one they like. Be on the sideline and ask them, which you like that one? You like that one? Oh, you don't like that one, do you? Oh, you like that one? I think, yeah. (laughs) Just sort of comment a little. And then ask them if they want to put it in their court. Ask them if they want to set it for like two minutes before. Ask them if they want to set it at that time. Ask them if they'd like a reminder an hour before or 20 minutes before. Put it in their court. So you see how I'm asking instead of suggesting? That's the way to move them. That's also the way to get them to listen and tune you in. Because what happens is when you ask questions, I have to think about, I have to think about what I did and what worked for me and what didn't. And I'm now more engaged in the process of whatever it is. Would you like to give me another? I always do questions and answers. A lot of times when I present, they ask me to leave most of the time for question and answer. So really, if you're a kid who needs support, you tell me if you wanna change your name first, go in there, change your name, and you can ask me anything you want. I talk to people like you all day. If you're a parent, please go ahead and ask. I speak to parents every morning. Um, it's It's a tricky thing to navigate when you have been helping your child to navigate through medical procedures. And we've got to help them help you. If I'm talking to you or if I'm talking to your parents, we've got to help you know you can. And sometimes it's easier to let someone else do it but sometimes it feels amazing balls to do it yourself. Sometimes when you do things for yourself, it's one of the best things in the world to think about before you go to bed, being there for yourself. So if there's something that's really scary and challenging that your parents have always done for you, if If you don't know the steps and maybe your parents don't know the steps, you can reach out to me and I will give you the steps. And then I will actually keep in touch with you and praise you for doing what was hard for you to do. Um, 
the key is you have to name the steps to get across the, the river and praise and name when you see the steps that day, the next day, the next day. Ask me if you'd like me to say anything more about changing a child's behavior. I'm a behaviorist. Happy to jump in. Do we have anything in the chat? Um, I love doing I think, it. I think sometimes I had trouble taking medicine because it gave me side effects. And, and it, there's pain. And well, there, I, yeah, I just made my face fat from prednisone and I didn't like that. So I was, I, you know, I always took my meds. I'm now a professional pill taker, but, right. um, you know, and sometimes they were just hard to swallow and I didn't connect because the problem when you have kidney failure, I mean, and you have a kidney transplant, you can actually lose your kidney if you don't take your meds. So I know parents are really, really anxious sometimes, like, um, because that's the number one reason kids lose their transplant is because they didn't take their meds. So Let me speak into that. Please. Um, there's something that happens where we've lived longer than your kids have lived and we know what they need to do. And if you know, because it's, you know, what Lori's saying, it's true. I think a good way to do it, a lot of ways I can move kids is I will look it up together. We'll look up what happens if you don't take your medication. I'll have them read a part to me and I'll be like, no way, really? Is getting a face roller to help her with the, oh, that's great. That's great, Abigail. Everyone look what Abigail said. She said, my mom is getting me a gua sha face roller to help with prednisone moon face. Sarah Hyland, a famous actress with kidney transplant, relies on that just for one reason. Abigail, thank you. You know, it's important to have kids when you know what they need to do, you're holding the need for it and they just kind of have to, to please you. But if we can give them, and it's for them, we have to empower them because we need them to keep that kidney. We need them to be able to go on independently, right? While staying connected. But um, to support them in discovering for themselves and having their own emotional reactions about what could happen, asking them what they're afraid of or what help they need in remembering to take it and trying not to give solutions. That's always a challenge for me. I'm sure it is for you too. Um, but not giving a solution, taking some wait time and saying, you know, what's the hardest part for you about remembering to take it? Ask them. Ask them. They, if, you, if they feel like they're in a conversation where they have the floor and you're not going to parent in that moment, they will be more open to it. And I know that's a tough ask. We're talking about health. We're talking about your babies. I know. Um, I want to, I'm happy to take more questions, please. Like feel out for yourself because look, we can take, we have a hard stop at 245. I'm going to say this. You can think about anything you think you've heard me say, or would you mind Isela putting on the, the last slide? Oh, yeah, yeah, all of the rock stars, the parents and the kids who are here. Parents, if you don't realize how um, extra the top you do and how much you have to do, and kids, if you don't realize how much more you deal with than everyone else you know, if they're not dealing with this, if you don't write rock star big on your mirror, I'm going to be a little disappointed. I think of you as the rock stars of the world. Please own it. The next slide, please. 
Oh, that's just how you can get me. So if you want to screenshot me, do it. But this is what I was looking for. What has been most useful for you today? I'm a learning specialist as well. And so it's important to solidify if something really spoke to you, if something resonated with you, find a way to write it down, put it in the chat or put it on a piece of paper, voice memo it into your phone if you need to. I'm happy to share it. And I'm sure Isela or Lori or, or Suzette or Cheryl will, will be happy to do it, but I'm also happy to do it. And um, just think about what was most useful for you today. If nothing was well, right, Allison, I need more. You know, I would like to say, Allison, that um, the one thing that my parents did and my grandma and mom were really good about it is that they got me engaged in things like arts and crafts. And one of the things I learned about myself was that when I don't feel like I'm in control, it makes me very, very anxious and sad, that's that's that, that committee. That's so when I would like, you know, make Christmas ornaments or or paint or anything like that, it made me feel in control. And the better I got at a certain art or craft, like I would make these Christmas ornaments and people wanted the Christmas ornaments. Like, oh, I want that. I would make these ice skaters out of beads. And it just made me feel good. And I learned that when I'm unhappy, it's because I don't feel in control. And re repetition type of art is really good to calm your brain down. Yes. Um, of just anything, like doing something repetitive or, you Lab know, getting in a book, reading a book, but don't yeah. watch the news or get on social media. Those things will make you more anxious. That's right. Uh, mandalas or mandala coloring books are a great way to kind of forget what you're doing and just rhythmically color and make beautiful uh, <coughs> shapes and pictures. Well, and now with all the phones, you can go out and take incredible photos. You know, you could just take you and you can edit them. And, you know, that's a great way to express your creativity. Um, I remember this one photo that a girl took at the prom that's still amazing to me, that she was at the prom and she took a picture of her medication next to her party plate. And that was posted to us. And it was just like, it was such a beautiful picture because she knew she had to take her medicine to, and it was just such an artistic view of, of you know, what we have to do. But, um, you know, there's just so many things that you got to find something you love to do. That is one thing that I have found. You know that that was what we were going to cover next. It was what makes you happy. And that I would love to come back and, and talk about that, because if we can find any of us, no matter how old we are, if we can find what makes us happy and make time for it. And I mean, really schedule it in your day. What is it? What makes you happy, Allison? What do you schedule in your day? I schedule a walk every morning. I schedule quality time with my dog. I schedule making sure not always that I can eat right, um, but I try. And I, I make sure to leave space for, for sitting outside and then looking outside and enjoying beauty. With those. Well, and maybe people could put in the chat before we wrap up, because we got about, you know, five, five, ten, I bid say about five minutes or so. Um, Abigail, do you want to put in the chat or do you want to say something? What makes you happy? I'd love that, Abigail, if you're comfortable, please do. And I'm going to put Abigail up here on. Hi. I'm also going to put Sarissa up because I just want to see them. They're going to be in the panel. Um, yes, hi. Later, but. Let's talk about what makes you, you guys, happy. Um, my dog. <laughs> He's here somewhere. My animals. Right now I'm at my dad's house. That's where my dog is. And then the cat at my mom's house is really cute. And he makes me happy. He's a little orange tabby. Orange uh, tabbies are adorable. My family makes me happy. I'm in love with my little niece right now. She Aww. makes me happy every morning. She'll smile, and it's just the most beautiful thing. Aww. 
think about that anytime you're having a hard time. Picture her smiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's times where I'm like completely in a bad mood. I walk in the house, she's smiling on the floor. And I'm like, okay, that is fine. And you can try and hold that if you're having a hard time and you're somewhere and you're struggling. Picture that sweet little face smiling at you. Look how it'll make you smile right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you, as Elizabeth? Hmm? Wait. Do you want to say more? No, I'm good. What about you, Elizabeth? Thank you so much, both of you, for talking about what makes you happy. Well, and I think, too, that the other thing that made me happy growing up was feeling valued because, you know, I always needed so much help in different times, like, or I'd be in the hospital or I'd need something. And uh, I mean, it, it really felt helpful when I was able to help somebody else. So somebody would say, you know, Sarissa, can you help me, um, you know, sort my beads or something? I, I don't know. I'm giving an example. But it felt really good when people asked me to do something for them because it was like, oh, I don't want to bother her because she's sick or she's this. But we all want to feel valued. We we all want to feel valued. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Elizabeth, I would love to hear what makes you happy too. Mm, My grandma and uh, my friend's baby. And and you got a kitty cat making a photo bombing you right now uh, yeah. not even my cat I'm at work so <laughs> oh cat. wow you have a nice work yes <laughs> yeah I would love to have an office cat <laughs> <laughs> you know it's always great tips you know because because it's impossible <laughs> to deal with this illness if we don't get a hold of our emotions we have to learn because we go through the Kubler-Ross stages of shock, denial, fear, anger, depression, grief, finally understanding and acceptance. And they can all happen within two minutes or they can happen in two months. I I mean, I've done both, but I do know one thing that one friend makes a difference. And I hope today that, you know, you connect with each other and be supportive of each other because to get support, you have to give support. It's, it's a, it's a yin and yang universe. And uh, well, thank you again, Allison, so much. And thank um, you, everyone, Lori, everyone who took the chance to be here. I hope you took something away with you today. I I think we all learned a lot. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. And a shout out to our corporate mission partners for making this happen.